everyone! Let me introduce you another way to have literally a ton of fun in a stone cutting process. The lathe! All its 5 meters and 6 tons. But first of all, let's install the blank and see what it can do, and then I'll bore you with the details. The workpiece does not need any preparation and was given to us by the client. The only thing I had to do was drill the center hole. This piece of granite weighs a quarter of a ton, so I also need a load. I don't even know what to say here. This is the way. Due to the bevel on the workpiece I had to drill a hole not quite in the center. But I'll fix it quickly. Maybe not so quickly. A little bit more. Any minute now. Oh, for God's sake! Tight fit. Anyway, let's start.
Now a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. If you think the machine looks like crap, it does. But you should to consider that at the beginning it looked like this. I rescued this machine from the middle of the field and God knows how many years it stood there exposed to the elements. The purpose of this purchase was to have a large solid frame around which I can build everything else. And here is what I've been able to achieve so far. First, as you can see, it works. Everything starts with this old computer which controls these drivers, which I placed in the former machine feed box. Drivers control three stepper motors. First, most powerful, which has 21 Newton meters of torque, is responsible for the A axis, which is the rotary axis of the machine. The transmission of torque to the spindle occurs by means of the gearbox of the machine, which I managed to restore. And here are the Y and Z axis. The Y axis is driven by a 12 Newton meter motor, which I installed through the worm gear directly instead of the manual movement handwheel of the carriage. The Z axis, on the other hand, has undergone more serious changes. I had to mill all the original guides and install modern rail guides. I also replaced the screw with a ball screw gear. All this is controlled by a stepper motor with 12 Newton meters of torque. All changes connected with the Y and Z axis are temporary, caused only by the need to put the machine into service as soon as possible. And the first thing I need to change is the saw blade drive and its mount. Also to find reliable segments for side cutting, since these are only good for straight cuts. That's why in the video I first cut the grooves and then proceed with the finishing pass sideways. And this is what happens when I give excessive side loads. The main problem with this setup is stiffness. I have a very large tool deflection even after two spring passes. You can say there is no need to try to process a workpiece with a diameter of 650 mm. But I want to use the machine to the maximum. So the saw assembly is the first in line to rebuild. But that's a topic for another video. For now I have to polish the job. And the first and most obvious thing to know about polishing round parts is that they are best polished as they rotate. For polishing I will use the following tools. Those random rigid pads, their main task is to remove the traces left by the saw. Flexible 100 mm polishing pads, as well as rigid 100 and 125 mm polishing pads for wet polishing. And of course, a grinder for wet polishing with water supply through the spindle. Enough talking, let's get started. <laughs> 